Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Caldwell, and I'm the president and CEO of the Ameren Foundation. We're starting a new series of videos uh, about why people love the Ameren, our supporters, our volunteers, and other members in our community. And for our first video piece, uh, I'm very honored to be able to interview Dr. Mary Jo Gorey. Uh, Dr. Gorey has been uh, a wonderful supporter of Ameren. She's volunteered her time here. She supported our programs, and she continues to be very involved with us. So I want to thank her for all that she's done for us, and uh, I want to introduce her to you today. So welcome, Mary Jo. Uh, welcome to our audience here. Um, could you tell our listeners today a little bit about yourself? Yes, hi. Um, I am a retired pediatric surgeon. Uh, I retired young at the age of 55 to because um, I had so many other things that I was interested in and wanted to do including travel the world. <laughs> uh, but what I got involved in um, was first um, city high school downtown, um, supporting an, a new innovative school that believed in children learning from the community. And also, I had already been involved in the arts with um, Arizona Theater Company and gotten more and more interested in theater and being on their board and um, giving money and raising money for them. Uh, so basically, <clears throat> as I, um, as the years went by, I got more involved with supporting all kinds of institutions of culture um, in Tucson with a focus on youth education and trying to support specifically programs that um, encouraged um, children to learn. And it's been so rewarding. Um, uh, I've enjoyed my retirement a lot more than my work. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit of why culture, arts, and education are, are things that you're most passionate about? I think that it is, first of all, because of my parents. My father was a uh, pediatric allergist, and he, they believed that um, you, could, you should not be just focused on you know, your work, that it was very important to be kind of a renaissance person and in, interested in in everything in the community and so that's the way he and my mother functioned and she was involved in volunteering for almost every arts and uh, garden and cultural organization in in Cincinnati so with that model I think I um, just gravitated towards uh, not with any specific direction at first towards um, getting involved in the community and whatever was going on in education and the arts. So can you tell us how you got to know Amherst? Yes, I can. I um, first came to Tucson in 1988. Um, I was burned out from my fellowship in um, pediatric surgery and from working in Cincinnati as a pediatric surgeon in a big children's hospital and came to Tucson because I knew this guy from Cincinnati, from Cincinnati, and um, he had moved to Tucson. And when I came, I um, was staying with him, and he lived in Benson. He was a doctor working in Benson, and he brought me to the Amaranth. And I was so happy to see a museum in the middle of this area where it seemed like nothing was going on in the desert of Arizona. And um, it was so beautiful. And uh, I, w 
was so impressed with the museum and I still have the um, beautiful turquoise necklace he bought me from the um, shop and um, then after that I was always wanting to go as long as I lived in Benson wanting to go to the Amherst. So what about Amarin's programs do you most appreciate? Oh, that's a, that's a hard question. I, I wrote down all the programs I like, <laughs> but <laughs> most, um, I think uh, the opportunity to um, meet the artists in person, um, artists in residence to go and talk to them and see what they think about living for a while on the land and what they're getting out of their residency and and the people who are exhibiting in the museum uh, getting to hear them speak about their exhibits and their work uh, is a real treat but I think the real reason that I come to Amarind is because it brings me peace. I, as soon as I get onto the property in the beauty of Texas Canyon, I just feel peaceful. And that, that is the underlying reason. That's a beautiful reason. Thank you for sharing it. For those folks who don't know very much about Amarin, what uh, would you tell them? What would you like them to know to encourage them to get to know Amarin? Well, uh, I would say that it's uh, a treasure in the desert. It uh, has so much to offer and is only an hour's drive from Tucson, really. And once you get to the Amarin, there are all kinds of ways that you can spend your time. Uh, you can um, go to the museum and see, on the one hand, the history of Native Americans and also contemporary Native American artists and what they're doing. You can go to the trails and explore um, the new trail system that's been set up. Um, and I think that the people who work at the Amarin are very welcoming and dedicated and that feeling, um, you know, pervades over the place so that it's uh, comfortable to come and wonderful to be there. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and thank you for all the time and the care and the support that you've given us. We couldn't do our work without you, Mary Jo. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with our audience today. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Mary Jo, along with hundreds of other supporters, values the work of Amarind in exploring the human story and in helping us learn more about one another's cultures. As with every museum in America, the Amarind Museum could not do its work without supporters like Mary Jo and like you. Our donors and members underwrite 40 to 50% of Amarind's annual operation costs. You make Amarind's work possible. Thank you. If you'd like to learn more about ways that you can support Amarind, please visit our website, www.amarind.org. Thank you for listening with us today. Take care.